Well, grace and peace to you from Grace and Peace to You Gathering here in Lexington, Virginia. Doing a little outside action today. Been in the dirt, transplanting a lot of great stuff that friends and family and sister in Christ and um, the Buy Nothing page I've been able to garner to put out in the yard beautify the yard in time everything in time uh, and also the summer just to let you know that we're going to be open off and on in the back have some music and also uh, if you want to come and be a part of this message or just sit and talk and about God's word and let me know and we'll make it happen at some point so Today's message is Seeds of Adversity. I looked at a gourd that reminds me of about seven years ago. Um, when I was planting a garden in another place, another season of my life. And uh, right before I went through my second divorce, or right at the beginning, and I had a heck of a time keeping these gourds alive because of this particular pest that wanted to eat it. I fought hard and finally won the battle over some of the plants and got some pretty cool gourds out of it. And I, you know, I wanted to make a bird's nest out of it because you can do that. Um, just drill a hole through it and you know, let it drive, drill a hole through it and whatnot. But I've always kept one of those gourds as a sign of hope despite adversity. You know, I had a lot of pests. I was going through divorce. Um, a lot of things going on. Uh, we're talking personal to you, the whole list. But the cool thing is, I have the seeds here and I'm gonna put them out this year and uh, hope you can see there there you go it's cool looking seeds I'll put a few out today see how that goes but uh, great things can happen and develop out of seeds of adversity these so these are seeds of hope now and all because of tough times that developed and honed the character. And that's where I'm going to segue into God's Word. Father, help us to understand your Word. Help us to know that adversity is not the end, that you are a God of hope, God of peace, the God of new beginnings. You are the Redeemer, and my Redeemer lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Uh, so, 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 10. All right. I'm trying to turn to that. All right. Now we have this treasure in clay jars so that this or extraordinary power may be from God and not from us. We are pressured in every way but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not abandoned. We are struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry the death of Jesus in our body, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Man, that's good news. Throughout the adversity, there's always hope. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 12. Verse 8 through 10. Concerning this, uh, Paul was talking about something he wanted to get rid of, some adversity, some plague that he had. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times to take it away from me. But Jesus said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. You get this? This is a flip side to society, the flip side to everything that you can think of, the flip side to another country imposing its will on another country, uh, governments imposing their wills on individuals, 
and relationships, people imposing themselves on. This is not, this is uh, businesses uh, imposing their will on others through uh, price gouging and whatnot. This is so contrary to the world. My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. The seeds of adversity allow the transformation and produce seeds of hope. Therefore, I will most gladly boast all the more about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may reside in me. So I take pleasure in weaknesses, insults, catastrophes, persecutions, and impressures because of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Let's look at Romans 5, 3 through 5. We also rejoice in afflictions because we know that afflictions produce endurance. Endurance produces proven character. And proven character produces hope. This hope will not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who is given to us. Amen. The two last things I want to share out of God's word. Why do we go through adversity? Well, there's a, there's a reason for us to learn things and also to help others. And 2 Corinthians 1 4 answers this. The God of all comfort comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any kind of affliction through the comfort we ourselves receive from God good stuff right there and lastly I don't know where you are in your relationship with God but let me tell you one thing Jesus loves you and he died for you and he went through hell and back literally in order for you to Glean from his seed of adversity, the seed of hope, so you can be transformed from the inside out for eternity, starting now. And this is what God's word says in John 12. And it actually is a metaphor to the salvation that he can give. 12. 24 of John. Now I assure you, Jesus says, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains by itself. But if it dies, it produces a large crop. The one who loves his life will lose it, and the one who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. There is a system of this world that is contrary to everything of the kingdom of God. And I pray that you find that seeds of adversity can turn into seeds of hope. If you got any questions about the message, I'd love to hear from you. Lord bless you and keep your grace and peace to you from grace and peace to you guys.